Hey peeps, and welcome to what we're going to call the Fat Peeps Most Anticipated Games of 2021. This is maybe not actually our most anticipated games, but it's a selection of games that we are looking forward to coming up in this year. Of course, I'm Joey, one of the Fat Peeps. I'm here with the other Fat Peeps. We got PJ, Garrick, and Cameraman John. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. And we're going to roll right into it. I'm going to start us off here with something that comes out in just a little over a month. And this is Monster Hunter Rise. Ooh. It's the new Monster Hunter game coming out uh, exclusively for the Nintendo Switch. Although, you know, there's speculation that it might come to PC later. So, you know, fingers crossed on that one. But... Uh, this is just a new Monster Hunter game. It's a little bit more of a, a hybrid between the newer format of Monster Hunter World and the old school kind of original format of Monster Hunter that you're familiar with on the uh, the, the portable platforms, right? Your, your uh, 3DSs and whatnot. And uh, yeah, you know, it just looks like another Monster Hunter game. Um, they've made a lot of changes. They added some things to the combat that makes uh, combat a lot more dynamic and adds a lot more moves to the different weapons. Uh, so the combat is getting even more bombastic and crazy. Uh, so that's great. And there's a bunch of return of fan favorite monsters that were absent from Monster Hunter World, which is very exciting. And there's some new ones. Right, they they got some brand new monsters specifically for yeah. Monster Hunter Rise, and those look cool. So, all in all, it just looks like this is gonna be another great Monster Hunter game. Wow! I played Monster See, Hunter World. Uh, I wanted to get into it. <laughs> I really wanted to, but then everyone was all good at it by the time I bought it, and I was like, ah, I don't know what I'm same. doing. Did I even get a chance to play with you, PJ? I don't think so. Maybe we could be bad together one day. I guess. Wait, is it a co-op game? It is. Yeah, and that it uh, is. So but how it's, could it, you? It's very punishing if you're behind the people that have been playing for a while because what? they're just like, oh. oh, I have beefed up gear, and then you're like, I have a spear. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's an so you can't RPG. Just find other new people in Brolock. Hey, no, because I don't like I'm new, new people. You're new. Let's so play scary. together. No, I don't like new people. Oh. Anyhow, it uh, uh, I'm glad that they're doing more Monster Hunter stuff. Doesn't really apply too much to me, but hopefully one day I'll get into it. I I legit have bought other Monster Hunters. I I have Monster Hunter Four Ultimate uh for the 3DS sitting on my shelf right now. Never even oh, wow. I opened it from the plastic. I never put it in my 3DS though. So I've tried oh, getting nice. into the series before, and I I to I will one day try one to the fullest extent, but when I don't. Yeah, know. and hope, hopefully the with this one. Oh, go ahead, Garrick. Were the previous entries exclusive to the Switch 2? Or... No, so they were, they've were. they been all over the place. The original game was on the PlayStation 2, and then they were on the PSP for a while, and then they were on the DS and 3DS. Oh, and wow. then, uh, and I think they were on like the Wii and maybe the Wii U at some point there too. Um, but Monster Hunter World was the first like big console Monster Hunter game. Uh, and Rise is kind of taking it back a little bit, back to those portable routes. Uh, and to PJ's point there about the, the kind of like difficulty of getting into the franchise, it is a very dense, uh, mechanically driven franchise that doesn't hold your hand very well nope. and uh i'm hoping that monster hunter rise will attempt to do better onboarding for new players than world did i feel like um, world did very... horrible um no world definitely previous and, and ones com yeah compared to like monster hunter 4 the one that you mentioned on the 3ds it's like night and day 
right? Like Monster Hunter Four has like no. Doesn't player have like a tutorial, really. right? It's just legit. Yeah. You go straight into like the story, and you're like, "Oh, right. I'm hunting shit," and it's like, all it, it's a fan game for the fans. Like everyone knows how to play this already. You're buying it because you exactly. Know this. Yeah. The, yeah, they expect you to know the minutia already about like what a Monster Hunter game is and what your like moment to moment goals are. And Monster Hunter World is a little bit better about uh, you know, putting in front of the player exactly what the hooks of the game are. And again, I hope that Rise going forward goes even deeper into that new player onboarding experience. I feel like they had to do that because it was expanding to places where it hadn't been before, like PC. So they had right. to yeah. give a little bit of something. Um, and hopefully they keep that mentality going forward, even if they're going, they're like reclusing back into just Nintendo. Because there's a whole new generation of people that could get into this that are playing more video games now because of last year. So they have a big opportunity. They just need to take it. Yeah. We will have to see going forward about like the PC version of that and stuff too, um, because that that could be a big deal if that eventually comes out. Um, yeah, but right now it's just on the Switch, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to jump in and hunt a bunch of monsters and and build cool equipment and stuff. That's what Monster Hunter is all about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, we're now going to move on to the next person. Garrick, tell us a little bit about your most anticipated game. Well, my most anticipated game of 2021 is a sequel to a childhood game of mine called Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Wow. Raise your hand if you're familiar with it. Well done. Excellent. So, um, this is basically, well, let, let me read the synopsis off of uh, Steam really quick. It's, um, oh, it's a, a, a satirical spy, spy fi layer builder where players take control of an e- evil genius and set their plans wow. for world domination in motion. Um, Amazing. so it's basically an RTS with a uh, kind of grand strategy light because you have uh, a world map where you kind of send your tendrils your minions out to do your bidding and it's a it's a wonderful game because it doesn't take itself too seriously it kind of it's kind of like, like it said it's a sat, sat a satire sat, sat, uh, it makes fun of the genres <laughs> <laughs> you just totally. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said. Yeah, it, it makes fun of of what like an RTS is, a, a, a strategy is, and just turns it on its head. Adds some, um, some, um, like if you like being the bad guy, essentially. Um, and um, yeah, I, 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 I've been looking forward to this because. I mean, it's been in development for several years, um, but the the original game was uh, re- was released in two thousand four, so they're way overdue. And this game was made by Rebellion, um, or it's published by Rebellion. I guess the develop it says the the developers Rebellion as well, but um, yeah, and it it's um. It's just a nostalgic kind of thing that I'm really excited for, and based on what the media and the content has been showing me, uh, that they've been showing us, I believe this is a very this 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 sequel is full of heart, and it's staying true to what the original one is. It's just enhancing it, making it better, learn from the first one, and um, yeah, you can just do your evil evil things and and kill spies and stuff. So yeah. It in gives heartful, me heartful man. Man. the vibe of Despicable Me in a game form. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe it came Despicable out before me. Despicable Me. It yeah, did. Maybe, maybe that's where they got it. still. Yeah. yeah, it's very corny, and it's hilarious. Yeah, like, I, this, I, I, I said it earlier. This is like a game I totally see you playing. 
yeah. if it's your personality. So yeah. I I'll watch you play it. I'd be interested for us to to play it for a video. It'd be kind of funny. Oh yeah, I'm down. I'm at, I'm actually pretty down to play this one. Yeah. So yeah, we'll definitely um we'll we'll see this maybe as a small se- mini series on the YouTube's. Wow. <laughs> We'll record three episodes and then just trash it like we did with the. Uh, oh my god, what was it called? Grim, whatever, the Grim Me or whatever. Anywho's. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm watching the trailer. Looks kind of looks kind of cool. I mean, yeah, you guys are going to see all the cool little dungeon builder type game, which is yeah. always fun. Mm-hmm. I don't have the patience for that, but <gasps> I'm glad people in our group do because <laughs> there's definitely an audience for this. So what exactly is it? Is it like a tower defense or is it like a Um it's it's a it's base building first and then once you establish your base uh you use espionage to kind of take over the world by sending your minions and stuff. You you're just you're pretty much like um you're you're in god mode so you're kind of like the the boss the evil genius himself so you have your own persona there but you control you don't control everything directly as would a normal rts be you would have your minions do it but it's not like you have full control of them you tell them this needs to be done and they're smart enough to do it without you without you micromanaging them per se so it's more like a like a progression oriented strategy game yeah. Where it's like yeah. it's about optimizing and yeah. yeah. Imagine like Tropico, but instead of a you know dictatorship, you're an evil genius trying to take over the world. Yes. Yeah, very cool. It looks very, very cool. Yeah, yeah I, I had no idea about that, but yeah. now I, I might have to check it out. It I'm looks really like Tropico to me too. Yeah, I'm really excited because um like my my generation got to grow on the first evil genius and I, oh. I hope to see what uh what this generation of kids and and young youngins uh think of uh, this new sequel so yeah that's good that's crazy yeah. that they're bringing back something from almost 20 years ago yeah uh and it looks like here this is, i don't know how true this is but euro gamer says it's probably going to be out on march 30th so Yes. Next month. Uh huh. You can you can pre-order now if you if you're Sick. you're a strategy and evil person who likes to kill people. Oh my god. Well, you don't do it. You let your minions do it. Oh yes, minions yes. Do it. Yeah, my hands are clean. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. All right. Well, very cool. And now let's go ahead and move on. PJ, what are you looking out for on the horizon? Oh my gosh, I had like a bajillion. Uh, things huh. that I'm excited oh, for. Wow. I get excited for games. Not that I necessarily like buy all of them, but um, my actual choice is uh, Back for Blood because I absolutely loved Left 4 Dead, the all both the games. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's go three. And then I found out Valve doesn't do threes, and uh, my world was <laughs> torn apart and destroyed. And um, I cried in my bed for a few weeks. And uh, going back to Left 4 Dead 2 was nice for the Halloween special uh, for anyone that actually watched that and went through the painful existence with us. But um, like the game's going to be really cool, at least for me, because not only the nostalgia, but they're, they're basically just recreating the game. It's all they're doing. They're putting the new graphics on it, probably going to put a couple of new game mechanics, but it's, it's just Left 4 Dead with a new name. Um, and the, they're just going to basically reskin all the special zombies. Uh, they're going to do the same exact things pretty much. Uh, the tanks are going to be probably more grotesque along with the other zombies, but uh, the gameplay elements are the same. I think they have the pistols in there still. A lot of the weapons are going to probably work exactly the same. The normal zombies work the same. Um, I'm hoping that they add some cool new mechanics and maybe new like bombs or throwable items and a couple new melee weapons and some funny stuff. But turtle rock always is pretty on point. And I've uh, like, 
Garrett can attest to this. I think the first Left 4 Dead we played the first or the whole entire campaign through multiple times, uh, probably oh, a yeah. couple hundred. Uh, and then the we started actually going through and trying to beat everything on Expert, which was fucking insane. Um, and the second one, we didn't get that much into the second one. I hope that they actually go a little bit more arcadey as the first one was. Because the second one had a lot of drawbacks. Like, I think it had a exhaust meter, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I don't know if they're going to bring that back. Um, and then I wasn't a fan of the way that the twin pistols shot in the second game. They felt off kelter, but it was still fun. Uh, overall, I, I, I hope everyone checks this out. I hope that a big community grows from it. I hope Turtle Rock gets the support that they need to possibly make a fourth one um if this one goes over well and uh i f i see myself playing a lot of it possibly making some videos with everybody whoever's down but what are your guys' thoughts yeah i'm excited i kind of it's kind of a throwback um i wasn't now that you guys talked about more uh of like the the downsides of day z i kind of see i kind of yeah, world war z or world oh yeah world oh, war word. z Sorry, my bad um but uh it's it i think i think because the uh most of the original developers are just working on this i think it's gonna be kind of a nice More homage the to the same original. yeah it'll feel the same we can replay it a hundred times and it. and just keep keep doing it and but just... john there's a thing your arguments are always like oh i don't want more of the same Sometimes if the formula is really strong to begin with, it, building off of it and keeping it moderately the same, like Pokemon, I agree with you, needs to change a little bit. Oh, but... oh no, no. More of the same is fine if you like it. I just don't like the uh, arcade uh, wave, you know, uh, shooter. Oh. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's understandable. So, I don't care about this game. Like, if, if you want more of Left 4 Dead, this is the game for you. Yes. But I, I don't. I don't. I find Left 4 Dead very boring. You don't like bullet sponge so you, games you either. You don't like arcade games, John? Is. Uh, not. I mean, depends on what kind of arcade game. Like for a first-person shooter, I'd rather have like in-depth, kind of like very, uh, deep combat and stuff like that. The oh, deep system. Okay. I'd be interested to see <laughs> them <laughs> add elements of puzzle to this. I don't see that. I think it's gonna stay yeah. very arcadey. But it'd be interesting to like have to drop a bridge on top of a tank in order to kill it or actually... something like that. Wouldn't mind some kind of leveling system, not what they mm -hmm. did in World War Z. World War Z felt kinda, gross. Kind of like character progression. I felt somehow. World yeah. War Z's that it that was interesting. Like the the perks and stuff you had to pick up uh -huh. made you want to replay it, so you can unlock those things. Yeah. Uh, Left 4 Dead for me had no replay value. Which, yeah, because even yeah, though yeah, World War Z wasn't similar. that great, uh, it was it, it at least made me feel like I was progressing and I could like unlock things. Right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a natural progression that, like, I think, I think we yeah. mentioned this before, or we discussed. It and before, yeah, that and that's a fairly it was new a different time. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. It's like back like, then, it wasn't really a thing, I guess. Yeah, the tastes so. were simpler, and it was more just fast-paced running gun. But that's but what gives it the replayability. I feel like if you have a yeah. really complex, deep system, uh, it gets not necessarily old but it's wearing on you as a player and it, you're like yeah. oh man i gotta stop but at the same time like these days people's tastes are slightly more refined and demand a more, little bit more, oh, like, more I, I agree that i agree that more people are kind of along the lines of what john would probably be like because he uh, us like i think personally i think it might be a nice breakaway from what the trends are with yeah. this with this game going like it, to more there, there might be something simplistic like a nostalgia factor to it for for people that are looking for something just 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 to run and gun and kill a bunch of zombies and just just get out of there again and do it again and do the next level again right yeah uh, the gore yeah, system right. that'd be interesting like they make it visually then i can do a you know play through one time play through and just check out like yeah. the the new like gore and stuff like that that'd be kind of fun but replay value wise eh, that's gonna be a no go for me 
Yeah, I think that some kind of progression system, uh, whether it be like character abilities or something like that, uh, would definitely add to that. Although I'm not sure that there's any of that in the game. Uh, from gameplay, I have seen they have some kind of like card system uh, where you're like drawing cards at the beginning. It looks like that could uh, have like elements and affect the gameplay and kind of change up how every different run is going to be based on your draws of these cards at the beginning of the round. Uh, almost kind of like a roguelike element in a way, roguelite, you know, where every run is different because you're you're being doled out different um, abilities and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, they, yeah. they when they added that system into uh, Left 4 Dead 2, not necessarily that system, but the system where it's kind of like, there's a game AI or a game master that chooses what gets, you know, Wasn't that the whole reason for the, the series? It's that, that uh, director, that AI director. Yeah, but it, they improved on it on the second oh, okay. game. Like, right. it's uh, in the first one, it was more random. In the second one, it's like you have a person that's down, they're going to send out a hunter on you to just fuck you up. Or you have a person yeah, that's straying too far, they have a smoker that comes out to grab that person. Or jockey. And that's more like that's more like systems and like systematic yeah. elements of the gameplay. Yeah. Uh, which to some extent can almost hinder it because the second somebody goes down, you're like, Oh, a hunter's gonna spawn. Yeah. Uh yeah. But these cards are more like I one of them looked like it was like it gave you more health regeneration but reduced your stamina regeneration okay. or something like that. It's just like little yeah. things to like change, uh, oh, be change the gameplay, and it's I think there was like, one that was like a pyro that might it might have been, I think it might have increased your your fire okay. damage, it's right? Like so it's like modifiers, kind of yeah, thing. modifiers so that when you're playing, you're like, okay, I'm gonna like focus around something while I'm playing, right? There's so like more to the meta game than just run around and kill zombies and survive. Okay, um, so yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty interesting. That's definitely, definitely a cool one. Uh, that's not slated to come out until June, twenty second. I so believe. So still, still a while. But you can go check out gameplay for that one. They had a closed beta a while back. Oh wow! Oh, really? Nice. So you can, okay. Yeah. I, I, All right. Along. Moving along to our final one. Oh God, John. What are you looking out for? Uh, it's not a sequel or reboot. Uh, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Not much is known about it. Not much gameplay has been shown. Yeah, this was shown originally at the yeah, PlayStation, PlayStation right? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Uh, it's they have like a time exclusive, so it's gonna be released on PC too. Uh, it's just it's 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 made for by, right, by a pretty small developer, Ember Labs. They're more known for like uh, uh, CG animations, and uh, yeah, they they're bringing that kind of Pixar DreamWorks animation into video games. It looks I so pretty. Love the look of it. It looks pretty, and it kind of reminds me of the Pikmin vibes because you have these little little minions that follow you around and do your bidding, which I like that kind of uh, gameplay loop. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, you might know. I mean, I know. I don't know if, who watches uh, some of these uh, videos that that uh, Ember Labs made, but one of their most viral one is the Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask fan film. Oh. And it kind of has the same like art style and feeling, kind of the, the Eastern, the Asian uh, artwork. So uh, I like I like that uh, chill vibes, yo. You know, with murdering spirits, not have... murdering spirits. I think it's about <laughs> rescuing, <laughs> rescuing spirits, little blood corrupt less, spirits, yeah. like gremlin things. Uh, yeah. Has it been confirmed what kind of gameplay it's going to be? I I feel like it looks action adventure to me. It's a but... third third person action. It's supposed to be very fast paced um, action with puzzles and stuff like that. God, if they but get again, the animations down with that style, that's, oh. yeah, that's really all I. Re the, the reason why it stuck out was the animation. It looks like really smooth, just Pixar DreamWorks animation, and if they can get that right on the game yeah oh, the, the thing that i'm concerned it. about is like we're seeing the rendered uh like cut scenes and they look beautiful but then you go into game and then it looks like like last airbender status and you're like oh uh. it just looks out of place and way off from what the the cutscenes are and they somehow transition it to where 
the game looks very much like the cutscenes, then I'll be a lot. I'll be one hundred percent on board with it. But I I hate. Games I mean, it's, where it's, it's yeah. deceiving. Uh, I mean, I feel like, yeah, it it has more. The the, the cutscenes definitely have more polish. Uh, but the gameplay, it's like there's not much gameplay to watch out there to really. That's what I'm saying. All I like, see in the gameplay uh, was that you, the animation really does kind of flow. But even even in the trailer, there is like quite a bit of gameplay where you can see some elements uh, that they're going for with, you know, yeah. like the quick dodging, yeah. like a kind of more quick dodging style of gameplay and and abilities that you can do with the little spirits that you mentioned. Right. Well, like there's one where they you like can uh, have them jump all over the enemy. And then when you shoot them with the your bow they kind of like proc out and hit other enemies yeah so it'll be interesting to see what kind of other uh combos and types of abilities that they will give you in this um what is basically just a third person action adventure game right which is such a classic uh kind of done to death genre right over the the course of the the with like the n64 and the ps1 kind of starting it but then going into the ps2 xbox gamecube era really where you see just tons of this style of game uh and they kind of like went out of fashion for a while so it'll be really neat to see a studio come to this and try to approach it uh, from a different direction right um and it's not to say that platformers haven't gone like there's a bunch of like 3D platformers out there, right? But it's a specific style of like 3D platform action adventure, you know, with like mixture of combat and platforming and stuff like that uh, that you don't really get very much these days. And even the the ones that were like that, right? You're like Zeldas have kind of moved on to this more open world uh, yeah. style of game so yeah i think this one's very cool and um i'm looking out for it too i i didn't realize there was a little bit of like actual gameplay so i take that statement back i think it does look really great in game too so yeah i would like to see more because again this was like a a presentation for playstation and it's like you know, it's like it's like the E3 demos and stuff like that are all super, super polished, yeah. polished, it's and a, not really what the yeah. final product is. So I would like to see more, more of the final product gameplay uh, later down the line, like a thirty minute or a demo or something like that. Yeah, when it's I think they're scheduled for March twenty twenty one. So that's oh, coming right. up so soon. Be cool. Yeah. All right. Well, it's going to do it for us. Those are the games that we are looking forward to uh if you watch this whole video how about you go ahead and down in the comments throw what game you're looking forward to here in 2021 wow and uh thanks everybody for listening or watching in this case and uh we'll catch you next time bye bye bye, bye. Mm.